Now, I introduce the main points and practicing methods of Yang style Tai Chi Chuan, body technique and footwork, and handwork. Generally speaking, without matter, there is no squareness and round. The priority for Yang style Tai Chi Chuan is the ten points of Tai Chi Chuan and practice article. Which said by the prior masters. The two articles aren't very long, but with profoundity meaning. So we must combine the theory of prior masters to practice Yang style Tai Chi Chuan. Then we can express the manner and character of Yang style Tai Chi Chuan. As people say, Yang style Tai Chi Chuan is graceful and generous. With comfortable movement, all this in essence, and the posture is graceful, free, make you feel good, even beautiful. Now I introduce the basic points in turn. From the head first. Xu Ling Ding Jing. Just as its name implies, Xu is emptiness. Ling means lit up. Ding is prop up. Jing is power. There's empty above the head, but you lit up. It means there's empty above the head. But act as there is something on the head. The head props up something. If you can do that, it means you can raise your head up. Head is erect. So as the neck. That is to say, head is not down, not up, not leaning, not slanting. The power is unhindered. And the chi and blood are unhindered. You can refresh. I stand here, after Shui Ling Ding Ji, I is spirited, very refreshing. If you are not, even if you low down your eyes in a way, then you can refresh again. You can't. Even though you glare. Because you lower down your eyes, although you glare, you haven't a vital spark, or even you can't refresh. So we must pay attention to this first. Heads pop up means refreshing. It focuses on the head, that is the face, which consists of mouth. What will pay attention to mouth? We will make the mouth like opening but not open, like close but not close during practice. It means, according to the tradition, don't close the mouth intentionally or to open, though exhale from mouth, but inhale by nose. It's true. In course of practical exercise, it's not right. You can't exhale and inhale, obviously like that. Exhale and inhale. In fact, you can look into mouth yourself. It seems to be close, but also open. It's not close tight, but not open like that. So pay attention to this. Another tongue touch the maxilla. Tongue touch maxilla, and it is natural, not constrainedly, but must act to pop. What it can make for? 
because we practice one routine movement within about half an hour generally. If you go on to do, you can keep moving one hour, even two hours. But if you can make your tongue to touch maxilla during its practicing, there will be a salivary mouth, which can make you feel not thirsty. But if you open the mouth, you will be thirsty soon, and can't practice any more. So must be careful of the mouth. Another note. To breathe, which involves qi. Generally, qi can't be seen and touched, but it is really in our living. So we must introduce today basis on the common condition of our practice. Qi consists of two parts. First is Yuan Qi, which is instinct. The other is postnatal Yuan Qi. The instinct Qi is natural and just say can't be touched and see, but you can't feel it. If Yuan Qi, if you can stand calmly and comfortably, Yuan Qi collects underneath at that time. Then, when the postnatal chi runs inside body, it's unhindered. The steady status presents after releasing intentionally. But, as this man say, the movement will integrate the breath. Yes, that movement integrates breath. Have two status. One, for example, in single movement practice, it's not only the free boxing, but also with the push palm forward or hit forward. When hit out, you shouldn't inhale because it's forward. If inhaling, you will unconsciously forward, not to breathe and sink. You can't inhale either, and must exhale to integrate. When hold up forward, to hold up the power, certainly is inhaling. Not exhale. If hold up and exhale, they round accordant. But in free sparring, for example, single movement practice, you can't integrate them. But in movement routine practice, which is different from free sparring. Within short time, to integrating easily, movement routine is in order to practice one by one. It covers long time and has connection between the movements, so it's difficult to integrate movements and breath. At that time, you only need to integrate naturally during the practice, not constrainedly during practice. Relax naturally. Chu sinks in Dantian, breathes naturally. But in the beginning, a first practice, for no habit to it, Chu seems to lower in Dantian. But suddenly, hold up without reason, and makes you feel choking. Chu holds up to thorax to make you choking, so it must think during practice for a long time that you accommodate the natural yuan chi thinks steadily, and the postnatal runs not only unhindered but also with rhythm. Slowly, one by one, is rhythmical really and steadily. From short to long, and with energy slowly, that need a process to integrate qi and movement naturally. And in principle, when practicing, except there there are eyes in the face, eyes follow the hands to change direction. 
Generally, eyes open to look horizontally, but they also close too. Sometimes it's high and sometimes it's low. Such as bank flying oblique. The hand holds up. Suddenly, you should look up, not look horizontally. Look horizontally at common time. Sometimes draw down, think. You should look down suddenly, not look up. So the eyes must be controlled. When hands in right, you will look right. Hands hold up and look up. Hands move and still look horizontally. That is wrong. Or hands move to the right level and look at front. The basic introduction of face. Stop here. Which contained in Shi Ling Dingji. Now the second. Upper extremity, which consists of shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers. The request to shoulder is to sink when practice, not struggling, and sink the elbows. Stand the wrist. And bend the fingers. Also, names extending fingers. According to the methods of Tai Chi Chuan practice, it demands relaxing. For the upper extremity, mainly relax the joints. For joints of shoulders, after sink down, turn the joint of elbow to drag shoulder. Stand the joint of wrist to drag elbow. The ten fingers drag the wrist by joints. These are to connect the trunk by practice relaxation. So they consist of sinking shoulders, sinking elbow, standing wrist, extending fingers. For the hand, there is a request to the hand. The palms extend slightly. The fingers bend slightly. When small gap between fingers, of course, the thumbs are special. They stretch out naturally. Can't be drawn inside. Drawn inside is not natural. The thumb is stretched out naturally and physically. And there are small gaps between the four fingers. Palm after standing, the hand is standing basically. Would it be natural? If pinch it. It's not natural. Disperse is wrong too. Not draw it down, and not stand constrainedly. Speaking comparatively, this posture of hand is suitable and better in Tai Chi Chuan. The hands are important. In the posture, there are not only palm, but also fist, and hand in hand. The feet are also used, but the hands are more important. If the posture of hand is like that, when standing and using the hand, it is convenient. For example, when punching, would it be suitable for the hand? I hit the opponent, push him. It's suitable for the pound. Another one pulling down the opponent. The head is also like that. So it's deflecting. Pull down. If split up, run here. It's also this posture. Split down. Run down. 
and also this position. These are convenient, look good, and unhindered. After upper extremity, inferior somer. In basic points, it consists adducting chest, up back, relaxing waist, relaxing hip, and make the waist as exhale. For adducting chest, just as its name implies, it is not straightening, but it demands adduct inside and naturally. To differ from bending intentionally, somebody bows and hunches when practicing. That is wrong. It bends naturally and differs from straightening, as well as bending intentionally. Must pay attention to it. Besides adducting chest, you will be up back, up back, chur, attaching the back. The power is so perfect. Adducting chest and up back. We are accompanied with relaxing waist and hip. Concretely, talk about the movement. As seen above. Adducting chest isn't straightened, and bow intentionally. It's bent naturally. After adducting chest, it is up back. How to do? To up straighten the back, and adduct chest at the same time. Focus on the back. After holding up the arm, to give press. If not adducting chest. But straightening, you won't exert strength. So at present, up straighten the waist, which is the division when moving after adducting chest. It's not bow intentionally. What you up straighten is the division, up straighten from here. To draw back the power, look at side. It is obvious. How to release the power? Exert strength, so it must up straight in here. If up straight in from underside to upper, it is uprooting. Then there is no root. You would stand steady. In the center, there will be one up and one down. Relax waist and hip, downward. Adduct chest and up straight and back from the waist. Present posture of dragging opposite. Then drag in center, stick out the waist. Because waist connects the arms, the back, the hip, and the legs. Any movement it makes affects the whole body. Especially the abdomen in front of it. When it moves, the internal organs would move fully. The interior and exterior, with upper and lower extremity, all move. So the waist is important. The source of life. As in waste, waste is major part. All this means that that waste is important. So it's up back. After able to up straight and back, it will be exploded. Then, when releasing power, the back and the waist can be used. Without that, waist can't be used. If straightened the chest, the back can't be up straightened. The power can't be released. If overadducting, the power can't be exerted. Either, in practice, bow and hunch mean prematurely senile, looks not good. So adducting chest and up back, relaxing waist and hip, they are harmonic.
to make the waste full use. Waste is the lead. With harmonic help of extremities, if extremities is not harmonic, the waste has no idea. Even if it is the lead, such as the leader in department, if the staff don't cooperate with him, his lowly leader, without any achievement, if act by single of each, it's no use either. So must make the waste as excel to lead the extremities. The source of life is in waste. Make the waste as excel. So waste is very important in practice. When waste moves, the whole body moves. The waste leads the body to move. Every part in it is used. We must pay attention to this when practice. The introduction of soma stops here. Next, we talk about the emptiness and fullness. Is mainly focus on the moving of low extremity. Fullness, for example, the center is in the right leg. Then the left leg is emptiness. On the contrary, the right is emptiness and left is fullness. They mainly talk about this. The center is in the right leg. But the right is a fullness. Then the left is emptiness. If the center is in the left leg, the left is fullness. The right is emptiness. But the、uh, dialectal relation of Tai Chi Chuan, Yin Yang theory, was popular in the past. But now, is the discriminative theory. The dialectal relation of all the parts contains the content. That fullness is emptiness, and the emptiness there is fullness. When the arm stretches, it is bent, but it is also straight. All these are dialectal. When the arm stretches, it seems to be extend but not extend, seems to open but not open. It's not straight. Generally, it demands like this. Besides that, during practice, it demands upper and bottom accompanying. An interior and exterior combining. Upper and bottom accompanying means from lower extremity, via soma, to the upper extremity, attach importance to harmony. Harmony is important. Interior and exterior combining means that the movement and mind combining. They are not separate, as the martial arts. The character of Tai Chi Chuan is slow and yielding. All the movements are proportioned. These are its characters. But because it's martial art, which made you part of power and techniques, it based on power. Second, its technique. Because of these, it must contain attack and defense. For example, when two persons fight, one attacks, the other defenses. It must contain this content. Be martial art, if without this content, generally, it means that it hasn't life. It's generally speaking, but Tai Chi Chuan has many functions. It's not only martial art, but also a body exercise and the regimen method. Especially, it is an art for enjoy. And edifying, as well as convenient for making friends. Tai Chi Chuan is bridge of intercommunication between people. Such above.
means that Taiji Chuan is not only attack and defense. If martial arts are limited in attack and defense, that would have too small area. Taiji Chuan has extended area, especially it is enjoyed as art. Somebody said Taiji Chuan is Oriental dance with a graceful posture to make people feel good. And a saying above, Taiji Chuan is martial art, which attack and defense is the same with other arts. For example, in the traditional opera, there are two actors commonly, but some can attract the audiences, for their action is vivid, with emotion. They have content, so they are genuine to make audiences happy or angry or sad, and the audiences like them. So is practice of Chuan. It has content of attack and defense. Push out the palm. With aim. For example, with the purpose of brushing knee to twist step, and banking flying oblique. With the purpose of ward off, deflect, squeeze, and press, the movement will be real. They make you feel genuine. Though you practice singly, but seems to fight with others, it is real. Without content, that would not genuine and have an expression. In martial arts, the chair and spirit are important. Without this content, means without support. Thought is negative and empty. So interior and exterior combining is very important. There are many stages. In the beginning, you were impersonated to a certain stage. From rough to careful, to more careful, these stages. In later, will integrate attack and defense to practice. Because at the beginning, without experience, the extremities are light. You will attend to one thing and lose another easily. But if you practice day and day, month and month, practice every day, then is familiar with the routine and has the practiced movement. Slowly, to practice the attack and defense. Beyond stage of basic point, then it will be suitable and real. When move, not only the body movement but also the expression. What expresses in eyes are different, obviously. After practice of Yang style Tai Chi Chuan, the eyes will be with spirit. It is wrong, as somebody said, that practice in a corner, in where nobody with the eyes closed, only by itself. It's wrong. We should do like that, because martial arts are with the content of attack and defense. To close the eyes is unreasonable. If that, the spirit can't be kept up. So in practice, we will pay attention to this. Upper and bottom accompany. Interior and exterior combining. The body movement and mind combining. Harmony of whole body. All these points during the process. We will still talk about that exerting power as ruling when practicing. I will talk about relaxation below. The adduction of power, as I said above, being martial art with power and technique. Without power, only good technique is no use. You must have power. Integrating the power and technique, but you can use power dexterously instead of much power 
to overmaster opponent, change to initiate without any power, is unreasonable. During practicing, we will pay attention to this. These are the basic points. From head to somer, upper extremity to lower extremity, combine the movement of mind. These are the basic instincts. Now introduce footwork. In practice, it's not complicated. But at the beginning, regardless of any things, it is difficult in the beginning because you have no experience in the past. When first contacting, it's difficult, but not very complicated. Obviously, it's horse riding step that the legs bend forward. Horse riding step, just like riding horse. In the past, fasten the stirrup in the feet, the legs are straight, which name horse riding step. Another is gong bu also names bow and arrow step. This is gong bu. Gong, just its name, implies the leg will bow. How to bow? The posture of the legs. One is like Chinese bar. The other is like Chinese ding. As the posture, we call it ding, bar-shaped step. In the past, bar-shaped step is obviously like that is bar, shaped step. Bar is Chinese character eight. Ding is force of the ten heavenly stones of Chinese such as Jia Yi Bing Ding. One foot is in front, the other is in back, one is straight, the other is side long. The foot is like Chinese character Ding, which is force of the ten heavenly stones. But the foot postures, one is straight and the other is side long, combining both. The front is Ding, the back is Bar. During practicing, especially for Gong Bu, Splayer the foot like bar. Move the center to A shaped step and make it as XL. Then the left changes to be emptiness. Advance. The heel fall to ground firstly. Then move center forward. Steady and gradually. Hold the arm by hand. The knee stick out. Slowly it becomes gong. Gong bu. How many is the converger? The leg bends to that it will be not vertical. The knee is forward slightly, but it can't be on the tips of toes. Accordingly, the back leg will stick out. The foreknist leg stick out. The emptiness is in the center. When sit by the right, stretch out the left foot. Move center to right leg. After left leg fall on the ground, the power transfers from the right leg to left leg. The left sense and the right will take over, or it will be unavailing. Some students don't understand when bowing, he is still straight. It's unavailing and straight. The gongbu has another requirement. Not only this leg bowing out without knee over tiptoe, but also the other leg will stick out and extend. There is a requirement too, not to straighten in this way. The front stick out and the back support, or the back stick and the front support. They are accompanying swing. It's steady and comfortable. If this leg stretch out constrainedly and tightly, this leg will be stiff. The leg bending will be emptiness. It's not suitable. Straighting out, straight. There is gap between them, which keeps the width of that of shoulder. Not only those have introduced above, sticking out or support of front or back legs, but also has support in left and right. Lean to left or right. There is support. So it's very steady, in front and back, or left and right. If the gap is narrow, and feet is in one line, it will not be steady. 
So pay attention to this. On the contrary, if white is is it suitable, white is not good. If white when moving, you will be slow and cumbersome. Not as this flexible. Now introduce emptiness and fullness food. Their posture in fruit work are similar with the gong bu. One is side long, and the other is straight. The difference is the emptiness leg isn't bow. The right leg sits steady. The left leg stretches out. It only needs to stretch out. The difference of them are: one is sole, stepping out on the ground; the other is heel, touch ground. If center is in right leg, left leg stretches out. With heel or soles touching ground, the right leg is fullness. On the contrary, the left is fullness. Then the right is emptiness. It falls on the ground with sole or heel. This requirement differs from the gong bu, which, with the width of that of shoulder, it requires to make the fullness leg, like spraying food as exhale, stretch straight out the left leg. But to do that with the measure of that, it seems to be a line between the feet. Which right foot to right, and left foot to left. The feet are separated by the midline. They can't get across the line. The left can't go to the right, and the right can't go to the left. They must be separated by the midline. So it will be steady. For example, crane spreading wings. And playing pipa, no matter the hero or the soul, they were separated by the line. These are fullness emptiness feet in routine movement. Gong bu is more comparatively than emptiness fullness feet. Emptiness fullness feet are less comparatively another punch. Punch is downwards. In a word. The front is thin foot. The back is side long too, but the back is not to front by 45 degree, but to back. In fact, to the direction of advance by 135 degree. Here, bend down the leg. Sit down. In substance, in footwork, it mainly requires such posture above. And we will point out, though also calling gong bu. But there are different requirements for the summer. In Taiji Chuan, for example, generally, when I walk off or squeeze or press or brushing knee to treat step, the summer for these, the posture. Is slantwise slightly. The soma is forward. Why? In Yang style Tai Chi Chuan, there is transverse supporting power, which likes a wall. If the foundation is bad, it will fall down. So a piece of wood is used to support the wall, but it will be transverse. Usually, we say that the cocked wood can support things with thousand gene, so it's the transverse. When supporting, the straight wood can keep the wall from falling. But if the wood isn't in standard, it's curving. Support by this piece of wood under the press, it will break from the loop. So the posture is slantwise slightly. Is what we demand.
The hands are towards the same direction. No matter squeeze or press, or brushing knee to twist step, or parry or punch, such movements, the soma is slantwise slightly to make side long rushing power. Then he is steady now. I can't push him anyway. But if, as the example above, that they are bent in the wood, the soma is straight. Certainly, sometimes it's emptiness. Lower ridge is straight, and in the center, it seems that the straight soma is suitable. But in fact, it is not. In this condition, when the hands take over the power, push him outward, exert all strength. He can't exert the strength. How to exert? It? The body slants forward slightly. That you can exert the side long rushing power. I can't push him anyway now. So in Tai Chi Chuan, pay attention to Yang style Tai Chi Chuan. Whenever the hands are in the same direction, the soma must be slantwise. But in single whip of Tai Chi Chuan, it is not slantwise. In single whip of Yang style Tai Chi Chuan, the soma is erect, not slantwise. Why now it will be erect? Because one hand is in front and the other is in back. According to the structure of body and the need of movement, the arm, like that, is suitable, not to exert all strength. Whoever to do will be steady. During this process, you will pay attention to the front and the back. So the soma must be erect. If the hands are towards the same direction, the soma will be slantwise. They are also called gongbu, but for some postures, such as san tong bei below, san tong bei is the same. In San Tong Bay, the body won't be slantwise because the arms, one is in front and the other is in back. Extend them. You will pay attention to both the front and the back. So the soma in it will be erect too, and what left is the same. When we practice. We will pay attention to that. Another to point out. Generally, after standing the palm, extend the hand, but it's curving. Not stand stiffly, but with curve slightly. It's common. Except the right arm for single whip. When the arm extends, it's forward. And straight naturally. We say straight combining curving above, but that is special. As talking about just now, according to the body structure, a need of movement, because the hand is downward, and the prior is upward. It can bend when upward, but downward is not. Bend when upward. If bend when downward, the hand will be break off. Bending downward is wrong too. He can't exert the strength. Bend when exerting, you can't exert strength, so it is wrong. Only one posture to extend naturally, not straight stiffly. If straight and stiffly, the arm would be stiff to break away from the body, and being single, it's not right. Tai Chi Chuan is harmony. After extend naturally, it can integrate the whole body. So one practice of the posture, you will do like this. It's right. If you do like that, the bend is wrong. 
and hand hand. Stand palm means sitting palm. Stand wrist and sit palm. When hand in hand, this is upward and that is downward. But if the five fingers must sink down, the wrist is adduct. Must adduct. A standing wrist, place here is wrong. If place here, pinch here. Then the whole body can't be harmonic. It will be emptiness. We attach importance to adduction of power, the body integration. So when practice this, you will pay attention to that. No emptiness, but not stiff either. Emptiness and stiff are unsuitable. It must be from the feet to legs to waist. Integrate the upper and bottom to be a whole body. Then reach the status that when one part moves, the whole body moves. The upper and bottom move following any part of movie. Not only the body moves, but also the mind moves. Or a harmonic. These are what we will pay attention to in the footwork. What we talk about here, R means in Yang style Tai Chi Chuan, they are movements. Means and movements are the same. Relaxation. In Tai Chi Chuan, it causes relaxation. It covers extended area. The common requirement is relaxation. It means not purpose. Relaxation make all of you bones, every joint, and ligament of muscle to be elongated, unloosen it, stretch it. The muscles unloosen and stretch to connect the inner one connects to another to integrate. If not, the inner would not be integrated. Without connection, it is wrong. So it is method, not purpose. If you make it be purpose, the body must be feeble. To practice feebly, but the Yang style Tai Chi Chuan has another advantage. However, it will be benefit to you. Even if in practicing, don't accord to the requirements of Tai Chi Chuan. It won't have harm to you. As long as you don't do wrong intentionally, it won't harm you. So some patients who are not healthy, when he practices, he doesn't accord to the requirement. But there is no harm. Even is useful for them. Yang style Tai Chi Chuan has the advantage. But if practicing under the basic points, it will be good effect. For example, if the arm stretch feebly in practicing. It will make your blood to run, and help metabolism, such function. But if you relax it intentionally and extend it, the posture is not the same. Usually, we say that the water flowing won't be stingy. The moving door won't be rotten. So practice will make condition for blood circling, and metabolism. As cleaning the slot to make the flow unhindered. This posture is different from that, obviously, and the effects are different. So Yang style Tai Chi Chuan has the meaning of yielding combines inflexibility. Hide needle in the column is not the natural martial art. 
but the sport was multifunction. From another point of view, it is martial art after all. So it must have this content. Integrate the whole body via relaxation to integrate the whole body. So its root is in the feet. From the feet and the waist is lead. Present by fingers from feet to legs to waist. The upper and the bottom will be integrated. Make the waist as XL. When one part moves, the whole body moves, especially for the waist. The internal organs of the bottom and in front of the waist will move following. When waist moves, it will enlarge the movement of the bottom and drive the internal organs to move. So Tai Chi Chuan in this steady condition and the steady environment via the movement of waist to drive the bottom to move and straighten the function of it by the self-movement of every part. The movement of Yang style Tai Chi Chuan is slow and gentle, and all the movements are proportioned. Moving but static, combined with moving and static, so it is suitable for many people, not only the old and the winkly, but also the young can practice, and it is suitable for the weak, or the strong, even the patient. By practice of years, some patients with chronic can't get well by medicine and injection. But after practice of Tai Chi Chuan, he has palpable result. It is well. So Yang style Tai Chi Chuan is suitable for many fields in bodybuilding. It is well. Now we talk about relaxation again in practice. The relaxation is intentional. It says relax intentionally and making still unconsciously. So you must relax intentionally to make the internal parts to connect, for example, stretch out the upper extremity. With relaxing intentionally, the relaxing intentionally means you would have the thought to relax. When the shoulder, elbow, wrist and fingers relax and sink, you should know the connection in mind. With the feel, you would have consciousness of yourself. If you have no feel, then you wouldn't have consciousness and can't control it. So in practice, should sink shoulder, lower elbow, stand wrist, erect fingers. Not only to feel each part of them, but also to connect them, one by one, to make the whole body harmony. The power, as we have said above, relax intentionally, relax under the basic points. You wouldn't to exert all strength, so it is relaxing intentionally and making still unconsciously. Unconsciously, there has the internal power, don't need to exert power. The power is natural, but if you try to make unconscious power with conscious, it will not be good. By the power, make comfort to yourself. Then we we'll talk about the purpose of the power. The power is natural. When the baby born, he will have the strength to kick the air and stir. When growing up, he has more strength. But it is also natural. The power in practice is different to our strength. It comes from practicing. As we talk about, there will be a process. To try hard. For example, like the pig eye. Before process, it is crude inner surface with bad tenacity. But after melting in high temperature, it turns into liquid. And after hammer harden for thousand times, 
Later, it turns into steel. Now it is shy, tough. The difference of power and the strength is the same. In the process, the strength is like the power. The process, which contains melting in high temperature, compare relaxing. It is means or method. The person who has practiced for a period of time is different from the person who has never practiced. The power is different. Exert the power, the whole body would move. Not certain part. The person who has never practiced will only move certain part generally. Hit or punch is by a certain part. But after practicing, it will move whole body, so there is different. The weight values tangent of this punching, but if I punch, will be several times of him. Yes, it is. In a word, relaxation is a method, not purpose. Purpose is wrong. Tai Chi Chuan comes from the living of people. But, for example. When the opponent hits me, I raise him up. He wouldn't hit me. After I do that, we will stand each other, ward up. He can't approach me. In our living, it's the same. Whoever you are, with martial art or without martial art, when the opponent hits, you will raise him up. It is researched by the prior master. This posture is right. After raising, he turns around. I can change to pour to catch him by this hand. Advance. Hold his elbow joint, and the elbow can hit him here. Close him with the body. Hit his upper or bottom. I can still run away. It is this meaning. If this elbow, I can run here. This is warding right. Ward by both hands. It is different from the singer. It is both hands to ward. Turn around to change to deflect. I can hold his elbow joint. If he has practiced before, he wouldn't go here. He will lower the elbow to go. When he moves, you can shake waist following him, push him away. It also causes squeeze. If he is slow before squeeze, he runs fast. Take over following him, push out. It is press. Though it is slow, Tai Chi Chuan has this content originally. Now some practice another movement, such as cloudy hand. It seems to be turning around. Who don't understand will think you are fishing. In fact, it's not. It changes handwork. It low shi elbow, go here, push. It also has the meaning. Generally, when we practice movement, one by one, under the order, but in application, it wouldn't be the same. In a word, when we practice thirteen movements of Tai Chi, ward, deflect, squeeze, and press, pour, split, elbow strike, and shoulder strike, advance and retreat, look left and right. Erecting center, it is said the hands, eyes, body, and feet will integrate to be one. Based on this, in application practically, they were not confined to format. In a word, changes for all to suitable. Make suitably is the principle. Application practically will be different by each person. The essence of the application is not to confine to format. In a word, Tai Chi Chuan is the traditional culture of China. Now. It is of benefit to the health, so there are more and more people practicing it, which is what we warmly expect. Expect Tai Chi Chuan will contribute to the human health.
Now begin. From the preparation, following is cross sparrow's tail. Single whip. Known by practitioners, the grass sparrow's tail consists of ward left, ward right, deflect, squeeze, press, etc. These five movements. In routine movements of Tai Chi Chuan, grass sparrow's tail is an important posture because the posture below, such as pushing hands, all come from this posture. Now we begin with it. The traditional practice of the preparation: don't close the feet and then splay. It's not like that. Stand here. The knees stick forward, becoming horse riding step. Stand naturally. It commonly sits on north and faces to south. Sits on north and faces to south. It is general posture. After that, combines with the basic points above. Such as Xu Ling Ding Jin, Chu Sings to Dan Tian, a duck chest and upper straight and back, relax western hip, sink the shoulder, lower the elbow, stand waist, erect the fingers. All these will present in the movement generally, especially for relaxation in mind. Take away. Any other thought? Fix attention on practice. So we will qi sing in dan tian. Keep steady station. It has been pointed out above. Qi sings to dan tian. It's not mind in dan tian. If it is mind in dan tian, it will be different. Now stand here with Chu sings to Dan Tian. Stand here, without moving, but his mind is in opponent's movement, so it has moving mind. Wait for the opponent movement calmly. Although practiced by singer, but has the mind of fight. In physical Chuan integration book has talk about it. Wait for the opponent to move calmly, still but moving. There is about to move. It is the requirement for standing. All the points will integrate into movement with relaxing intentionally, not matter mind and body. We are under these requirements. It is preparation. Whole body relaxes. The arms sink down naturally. But not feebly. There is a requirement to it. It must be to sink shoulder, lower elbow, stand waist, erect fingers. After relaxing and integrating all these, there is power inner. Joint connects joint, and has power in them, not feebly. This is different from that. It has requirement, and must under the requirement make adduction unnaturally. Now is beginning. The beginning is like that. First, I demonstrate coherent with beginning. Grasp Sparrow's tail, single whip, to make you have a knowledge of it. Second, I will explain separately. Last, Yang Jun will demonstrate for you to press in your mind. Now the beginning.
Now I introduce these postures separately. Based on the preparation, in the beginning, four wind up the arms, turn the center of the palm towards body. Then from bottom to upper, rise slowly, put forward. The width between arms is the same as that of shoulder. Rise horizontally, bend the elbows, stand the wrists, erect ten fingers. Then from upper to bottom, fall slowly, in front of hip. This is beginning. Pay attention to that. When the arms sink naturally, the arc is to the body. Don't change the shape of arm. The wind up the arms. And shapes are arc, low down slowly. Bend the elbows in a way, the waist sits slightly. Erect ten fingers forward, the arc turns toward up, but the shape doesn't change. Straight but curvy, and extending, but also be an arc. Low down, it is also an arc, and so is when towards inside. Pay attention to that. The ten fingers sink by sides naturally, relax the whole body. Then the four tips and tip toes, fingertips will feel that. This feel is for the whole body, not for a certain part. The feel in tip toes and fingertips is the feel of whole body, sending to the fingertips. The whole body has feeling. This is beginning. Rise horizontally. Bend the elbows, stand the wrists, sit down the arms naturally to the front of hip. Next is boarding left, grasp sparrow's tail, ward left, to this direction. The foot stretches to the south, but the face is to the right. Practicing, move center to left. The right splays with the waist moving. Splay A-shaped step, shape an angle 45 degrees. When bending knees to crunch, the arms one from back to front. The other from front to back, put together, sit on the right leg. One leg is emptiness, and the other is fullness. Pay attention to that. Sink shoulder, lower elbow, stand wrist, erect fingers. This point is through the process. In every posture, also, sink shoulder, lower elbow, stand wrist, erect fingers, and put the arms together and sit on the right leg. Left leg raises and stretches forward. There is gap between them, which has the width as that of shoulder. Sit on the leg. After the left foot fall on the ground, move center. The left sole stamps on the ground. The five toes paste on the ground. The knees stick out. The left arm winds up from bottom to upper. Right hand presses down. Put here. Ward left. The left arm to ward left. Point to the right front basically. Seem straight but not straight. Don't erect stiffly. But with an arc, warding like that, by the arm. Don't put here, not the hand, but the arm to ward up. Pay attention to that. The fingers must be higher than the tip of elbow, but if it is horizontal, absolutely, it will be impending. The fingertip is a little higher than the tip of elbow. It is suitable. Stick out the knee, but the knee can't be on the tiptoe. Sit. The back leg will stretch out, but not stiffly. This is warding left. Ward right. Directed to the right front, which is west here. Center is back. Change footwork. The left foot change to A-shaped step. Prepare for the next posture. Stretch right foot to turn left. Move center to left. The right arm rises from bottom to upper. Under the left arm. Raise right leg. Bend or erect naturally. Stretch out to front. The movement of bow leg is same with that of above. At the same time of moving center forward, the sole put steadily. The five toes paced on the ground. Right arm is from bottom to upper. Left arm is from front to back. Lay between the right elbow and the wrist. Also bow foot. Legs bow out. The arms fold up. The fingertip is higher than tip of elbow. That is an arc of 90 degrees. Right hand doesn't incurve. 
just as an arc of 90 degrees. It is unhindered and round. The position of left hand between the right elbow and wrist, the distance of left finger and the right forearm, is a one fist. In this position, it is okay. This is warding right. Deflect, stretch towards right with the waist movement. At the same time of turning around, the right arm turns outward clockwise. So it's the left arm to the body turned to the right of 45 degrees. The right arm four wind up at 45 degrees, then turn from right to left to the left oblique angle, which is the direction of 90 degrees to elbow. Deflect to the left of 45 degrees from right to left. Through the range of 90 degrees, then lay on the left. After deflecting, squeeze. The right arm in curves and wards up. Left palm turns clockwise. When the center of it is outward, put on the right forearm gradually. At the same time of pushing forward, the right leg bends out. Put here. The hand is different from that of warding right. When warding right, the left hand is under the right arm. But now the left hand touches the right forearm. Pay attention to that. The left hand doesn't put on the bottom of right palm. In here, it will be impending. Can't exert strength. So you put in upper, here, about one inch from bottom of palm. Then the strength can be exerted. This is a squeezing. Next, the pressing. The arms separate to each side. The distance between them is at that of shoulder. At the same time of moving center backward, bend the elbows. Draw in the hands. Sit steadily in the left leg. The hands are in front of the chest. Stand palms slightly. Push forward. So the palms should stand, but not to act towards round or intentionally. This seems to be an arc. Stand palms slightly in front of the chest. Seem to be a small arc. Seem to act toward a circle. Don't draw a circle intentionally. If stand the palms, they will push forward at once. So stand the palms slightly. After that, follow the center moving. Stretch the arms forward. Stick out the legs really. And extend the arms. After sit steadily, single whip. It will turn to east. From present west, there will be a large range to turn. So the movement is steady. Turn to east from west. The length of arc is long. Now I demonstrate. Move center backward. The hands are in the same height. The right sole raises in a way. Then when turned from right to left, this arm doesn't lay stiffly. It should stand, flat stand. It means adapting the hand like that. The hand can scratch and grasp. It is the same with the palm. This is erect. This is flat. After standing, the arms move with the waist movement. The left arm leads the right arm with the body movement. The right foot buckles toward inside. It is suitable for buckling of 135 degrees. The foot buckles and sits, and the right arms turn back. Move back center. Right arm stretches toward right back. In hand in hand, the thumb. Firstly, is little finger, then ring finger, middle finger, and thumb sink freely. Hold together slightly. Wind up the left palm. The center of palm is towards the body. Stand the left palm. The left arm wards up. Stamp steadily the leg. Stretch the left leg forward. At the same time of turning around, extend out the arm, bend the leg, and splay the left palm. Here is single whip. What we have talked about above. Because it must be care of the front and back. The somer is erect, and look at the front, which is east. Look at the front between the thumb and the index finger. Generally, require the knee, elbow, and hand are opposite. 
the length of arc should be longer. It is not 45 degrees. It will be larger because the four fingers are special. Like that is right. Above is a part. When practice, we will pay attention to the feet, the stride, based on height of the forelimb leg, and it's based on the gong fu. If practice for a short time, you can't sit down. The stride will be short. If you can sit down, the stride will be long. No matter long and short, it will be natural. When bends on the other extends naturally, if feet bends slightly but stride is long, it will be not suitable. Stretch out, but it cannot stand up. Bend and stretch will be naturally. All the bow foot must have gap between them. Turn around of 45 degrees. There must be a gap. The front leg bends and the back leg sticks out. The back sticks out, but not stiffly. It will be harmonic with the front. Whenever we meet such situation, we will practice under this requirement. There won't be more detail of it. Pay attention to that. No matter what right or other posture, the posture must be right. After posting right, do the next. Wind up the hand and turn around. Sit down and do next. Every posture will be clear, just like the handwriting. Fine brushwork and regular script make up of clear strokes. Where will it be stopped? Where will it be raised? Where will it be pressed down? Generally, there will be clear. The standard posture means the best state of it. When you feel very good, go all steadily. Above, we have introduced these postures: preparation, beginning, grasp sparrow's tail, raise and kick, ward left, ward right, deflect, squeeze, press, turn around, single whip. During turning around to single whip, the right foot backwards with the waist movement. It turns from the front to south. It is only 90 degrees, and another 45 degrees. Lay here. It will be naturally. The foot can stretch to the front. If they can't buckle here, only to 45 degrees. Come here to this direction. The toe cap points to south. That is 90 degrees. Generally, this foot had a better stamp on Yong Chuan. In fact. When crouching by the emptiness leg, the Yong Chuan point is under the arc. The knee is to the same direction to tiptoe. Sit here. It is steady. Turn around. Sit here. Stretch out the foot comfortably. But in 90 degrees, stretch the foot will be not comfortable. It will be tidy. And when this foot stretches out, the back foot will not be comfortable. It is not comfortable, and you will be hurt. Don't do that. The angle of 135 degrees is right. After sitting steadily, stretch out. It is comfortable and steady. Now Yang Jun will demonstrate for you.
We have practiced some postures above. Now, under the routine order, go on to do that. From single whip to raising hand, crane spreading wings, brush left knee to twist step, hand strums the lute, repeat. Brush left knee to twist step, brush right knee to twist step, brush left knee to twist step. Hand strum salute. Brush left knee twist step. Stop. Some postures are repeated. Only several head are different in footwork. Postures of part head are bow, foot commonly, but now the first raising hand contains emptiness for his feet. So does crane spreading wings, and hand strum salute. I will demonstrate firstly, then explain separately. First, single whip. The demonstration stops here. Explain separately from single whip to raising hand. From east turn to south. Change foot form. Single whip. 
then waist turns to south. Change footwork. Senna moves backing away, relax the front foot slightly. Buckle the left foot with the waist movement. It's 45 degrees. After that, move Senna to left. Empty his foot on his feet. Lay steadily the left and raise the right. Stand the right wrist. When advancing, the arms put together in front. Be careful before it. The right arm is higher than the left, and the right is in front. The left is in back. Stretch right foot. The arms put together in front. Now the feet have changed. They are not bow feet anymore, but empty this foot in his feet. It seems that they are separated by one line. There is no gap between them. Move basis on it. The front foot is thin foot. The back is A-shaped step. There is no gap. Pay attention to it. knee and elbow. Body turns to that with 45 degrees. The left hand put to the right of right hand. Stand palms. This is raising hand. Crane spreading wings. Turn the palms to be opposite of edge. It is a posture of deflecting. Deflect from upper to bottom. Now the left hand is above the right. Put arms together. Sink the elbows. Don't nip them. Then turn to east. Buckle the right foot. It is A-shaped step. Move center to right. When advancing, ward up the left arm forward and turn out. Raise over the head slowly. Left arm draws down. Put beside the left hip. At the same time of advancing, the left arm press down. Stretch left foot. It is emptiness for this foot too. But the difference is that in raising hand, it is here, and here is so. They are all emptiness for this feet. In raising hand, it is here, here is so. In warding, it must be the arm to ward, not the hand. It is the arm. This presses down, extend the elbow. Without this, there won't be bending chest or straightening back. The movement of relaxing waist and hip is coherent. And do them again. It will be clearer. Turn the palms from upper to bottom. The left can't move any more. Bend up, arms put together. Be careful of direction. Move center. When advancing, ward up the right arm. Turn out, and the left draws down. Put beside the left hip. Don't attack this hand. The arm and the hand are on the same heart. Upper is an arc. The tip of left elbow should be backward. The five fingers stretch forward. It will be suitable. Slanting is wrong. It is symmetrical of upper and bottom and extending. Stretch out the foot, but not erect, which will be stiff. It should bend in a way. Stretch out. Look at the front. It is that crane spreading wings. The hand is above the head. After that, according to the routine movement, it is still in the direction of east. This is brushing left knee to twist step. Firstly, talk about the footwork of it. Now empty his foot and his feet. Move by brushing knees and twisting. There are bow feet with gap. During moving, the arms have a break. At the minute of waist movement, the right arm side raises up and turns inward. Stand the left arm. Pay attention to this. When turning, stand the palm. Then the arm moves naturally. 
bend the arm and move. If quickly, it will be like that. The left arm bends to the front of the bottom and directly from the bottom to upper. Lay the right leg and stretch the left leg. The left foot strides to left. There should be gap between the feet. Move center forward. The left sole lays steadily. The left arm moves from the front of the chest near to the knee. At the same time, the right arm in curves with the body movement, turn to front from side. Here, when bending the leg, pull and push, move. Combine these three movements. Pay attention to this. When pushing palm, in the body exercise of Tai Chi Chuan, push out the palms, but not only the hands, all the arms. Push out, then unwind. Waist moves to this direction. It will be harmony, and can make full use of power. So the body will move, not only the hands. In brushing knee to twist step, pay attention to this. Next. Hands strums the lute. The direction of it doesn't change. Change the bow feet to emptiness fullness feet. But here emptiness fullness feet are different from that ahead. There's no gap. Move center forward. Raise right foot. When raise heel, adjust the foot slightly. Though it moves center back, lay the feet steadily. The left foot stretches separate. The right arm rolls back. The left arm splits up. So the hands, after raising the heel, the right hand rolls back. The left splits up. Lay the leg steadily. Stretch the leg like that. The movement stops here. Let's review the raising hand above. It seems that the posture of hand strum salute is in left, and that of raising hand is in right. But not. The postures. It seems that one is in left and the other is in right. Then let's review the movement. Single wave followed by raising hand. Center is in upper. Buckle the left foot with the waist movement. Move center forward. Raise leg and relax waist. Then go. Advance and put the arms together. Cut the arms. Move like that. But hand strum salute is different. It doesn't put together. Move center forward. The right hand rolls. The left hand splits. Raise up. This hand rolls and left hand splits and cuts the arms, but the method is different. The movement is different. Looking at the postures, it seems to be one in the left and the other is in right. In fact, the hand work are different. So in moving at the same time of turning, wind up the right palm. The center of palm is side up. Stand the left palm. The arms move as soon as turning around. Have a break, then turn and wind. There is a round. Pay attention to hands. The upper raises up. The bottom draws down. The posture of playing pipar is different. It can't raise up, only to draw down. And the left hand is in bottom, just raises up. It can't draw down. In this, the hands are different. And the movement are the same. The hand upper can raise up. The lower hand can draw down. Act toward round. Lay the leg. The left foot strides to left. Change to be bow foot. Turn around. Here is the same with the above. Stamp steadily. The left hand puts in front of the knee. The right palm turns from side to front. Beyond the leg, then push and pull. 
It is the same with that above. So here with them, about change, Shannon is backward. Spray the left foot with waist movement. It is 45 degrees. The left palm side wings up. Stand the right palm. Make an arc. Change and run at the same time. Shannon is backward slightly. Spray the left foot with waist movement. Wind up the left arm. Stand the right palm. After that, as soon as moving center forward, the arms act to toward the round. The upper can raise up. The lower can draw down. They are same with that above. But pay attention to that. Raise leg and advance. The arms move. This leg, when it advance, doesn't pause. Raise it up and stretch. The foot force on the left. Stand the left palm. Beyond the right arm in front of chest, turn from left to right. Stamp steadily. The right hand raises forward. The left hand stands in front. Bend the legs, then push and pull. They are saying, erect body. The right hand puts it beside the right knee. Extend the left arm, then bend in front. Move the body forward. Repeat three times. Move center backward slightly. As soon as splaying the right foot with waist movement, the right arm in towards. Stand the left palm. After that, move center. The arms move. Raise leg and advance. Don't pause. Advance. Turn around. Bend the knee. Stand palm. Push. Repeat below. Hands drum the lead. We have introduced above, so there's no more detail for it. Move center forward. Raise leg and heel. Then move center backward. The right hand rolls. The left hand splits. Sit the leg and stretch left leg. This is hand strums the lead. Next, also brush knee to twist step. When turning, move arms and stand palm. Stride the foot. This is the separated part for the first part. It is from raising hand, crane spelling wings, brushing left knee to twist step. Hand strums lead. Brush left or right knee to twist step. Brush left knee to twist step. Hand strums lead. Brush left knee to twist step. Stop here. These are the basic movement. Then Yang Jun demonstrate that for you.
Go on. Next is Perry and Punch. And withdrawing and pushing. Crossing arms. This part stops here. Parry and punch here is different from the post chain above. There is a process. Not only a step, run continuously. I demonstrate firstly. We have just practiced the posture of parry and punch, withdraw and push, and crossing arms. Now explain parry and punch. It bases on the pushing knee to twist step, also to ease. But it can't be finished by one step. Advance continuously. Firstly, adjust the eight shaped step. Shannon moves backward slightly. Splay your left foot with the waist movement. Left arm turns out. Stand the right palm. The difference with that is above is in pushing knee to twist step, the upper hand raises up. The lower hand draws down, but parry and punch isn't like that. Its arms draw down at the same time. With raising leg and advancing, the foot plays its A-shaped step. Prepare for a next posture. The arms move down to the left. Stand the left arm. And the right hand makes a fist in front of chest. Then from left to right, wind up the wrist to move. Move center to right. Now the fists are in front. When advancing, the right hand acts back toward round arc. Extend the left arm forward. Stretch the left leg. When bending the leg. Draw back the left palm and stretch the right. Stretch forward. It is this posture. Bend the leg. Kick out. We will pull the outlet. Parry and punch, just as its name implies. The left hand holds back. The right hand takes away. When holding a fist in parry and punch. There are five different methods of it in the whole movements, but the major meanings are the same. They seem to be different from the difference of the joints. What we made just now, the wind down wrist moving isn't obviously, and the wind up wrist moves clearly. When wind down wrist, close the four fingers. The thumb puts outside of the index finger. The surface of the fist is flat. Hold tightly. But it can move. It is not stiff. With all the power, the fist is tight and flat. Be careful not to make it empty. 
It is wrong for the empty fist. The holding method of the fist is above. There is a wing down waist in stepping forward. The right hand is taking. What is wing down waist? The center of the fist is downwards. This is a wing down waist. The center of the fist is upwards. The back of the fist is forward. This is a wind up fist. The left hand holds back. It means defense. This posture bases on the brushing left knee to twist step. The center of the gravity splits the left foot with waist movement. Rise up the arms. Bend the elbows down. Raise the leg and stride without stopping. After the right foot stretches out, prepare for stretching to left. Go on to move center of gravity forward. Then we pay attention to the integration of the hands and the lower extremity. That is the posture of advancing. Somebody will not be harmonic. The arms rise up, advance. The foot falls down here. Move center of gravity. The arms should bend in a way. Then the advancing the fist can hit back, and the palm can extend forward, hit back and extend through it. It expresses as soon as the left leg stretches forward. Integrate the three postures. Look at this. As soon as advancing hit punch, you can push out the palm firstly. They won't be harmonic. So move center of gravity to the right leg. The arms seem to bend slightly. Separate the arms when advancing. After fold down the left foot, bend the leg and punch. Pay attention to the fist. When hitting the center of fist is upward, punch. Was turning left, turning the center of fist turns upwards, and the back is forward. Bend the leg and stretch out straight. In the course, head to the front. It will be more clearly. The stepping forward, wind down the wrist and take to the left, wind up the wrist and take to the right. Hit his face in front. It means that so when moving in a process, it is the first in the second part. There will be another stepping forward. The movement of Ban Lan Quan is the same with Ban Shen Quan. It is obvious the wrist wins obviously. Look, open the foot, move center of gravity. The arms move down. One makes the fist in the center. In the course, the fist wins down the wrist, and taking is not very obviously because the joint is different. The next runs like that. Ban Lan Quan is over here. Ban Shen Quan connects here. The movement is of taking is obvious. Wind down with to take, wind up with to take. It is obvious. The difference is mainly on the joint. We would be careful. After punching in Ban Lan Quan to withdraw and push, wind up the left palm. The center is towards body. Loosen the right fist and stretch out from the front to the left. Turn right. The right arm moves from the front to back. The left from inside to outside pushes and stands. The left arm springs out. It means the right hand pinch. The left springs out under it. Springs out again. Then turn around, catch his arms, push him away. This is the posture. So while practicing, wind up the left palm, loosen the right fist. The arms rise up, move from the front to back, and the hand turns outward. Move center of gravity on the right leg. When the right hand touches the left elbow, and there forms a triangle by both hands and body. It should turn around, turn around, to the front. The both centers of fists are side inward. Then stand, stand the palms, push out to the front. Just like withdraw and push. 
The wind can't approach me. After pushing out, this post shelf finishes. The crossing arm. It means somebody in my back of right, but I can't make sure. It is foot or hand. I don't know. When turning, there are attack and guide positions in this way. I mean the hand moving through that direction. Buckle the left foot with waist movement and point to the front. It must move to these points in this way. Then it contains attack and guide positions. So after the foot buckling, the crossing hands move to the left slowly. Move center of gravity to left. Sit on the left leg steadily and draw back the right foot. Still horse riding step. Hold up the arms. Make double holding hands. It is crossing hands. Stop here. The second part. Next is carrying tiger to the mountain. Have a break here. Stand up. Separate the arms with the width of that of shoulder. Wing down the arms to the center of hand faces downwards. Now the arms move from upper to bottom, near to the hip. Finish here. This first part finishes here. Yang Jun will demonstrate continuously for you again. Please watch. <laughs>